Welcome to our Five on Five. We're pleased to welcome back Teddy Abrams, the Brit Orchestra Music Director. Teddy, it's been three weeks. That's right, That's three weeks. That's how quickly the season goes. How was it? What was? What did you think of the 2015 season? It was fantastic. We we said it was going to be epic and, and enormous and adventurous. And I'm very pleased to say that I think it was all of those things. And it was, it was also incredibly tiring, um, but energizing at the same time and, and very, very special, very moving, actually. Yeah, you talked about trying to push the limits this year. you feel like you're able to do that? Yeah, absolutely. We had 130 musicians coming to this area. The, some of the greatest, I think, extraordinary professional musicians who make up the Brit Orchestra. And they played their hearts out. They rehearsed so intensively, I mean, to the, to the point of, of, I think, the maximum capacity of what any musician is capable of. Mm -hmm. But we presented not only some of the great masterworks of the past, works by Brahms and Berlioz and Stravinsky, but also contemporary pieces that we created just for this festival. I wanted to, to say that, that our our audiences heard something that they could not have flown anywhere to see. They had to come here to experience something that was created just for them. The pieces that we commissioned, the pieces that were played for the first time, they were made for this community, for these audiences, and that's very, very special. Very nice. All right, so what about uh, dealing with smoke, especially on opening night you guys had to deal with a little bit. Did, was it a problem for you guys, or were you just working right through that? Well, actually, uh, the, the opening night had 270 musicians on stage, because not only did we, did we have 100-something musicians, we had a giant choir. Hmm. Uh, and so that meant that in, I think it was 101 degrees on stage, we had yeah. smoke, we had fire, we had <laughs> particles all flying around the air, stage lights, and people breathing that all in. Yeah, that was one day after the Stouts fire started, so exactly. that was the Worst night, I think. Yeah, but everybody had such an amazing attitude. The musicians had such a positive attitude. It also helped that the theme of that particular piece was kind of a wild apocalyptic, apocalyptic scene. Mm -hmm. I think maybe that actually helped. It gave it a certain ambiance, you know, a certain backdrop. But the fact is, these musicians come here to play. They look forward to this all year. And so even despite the challenging circumstances, I think everybody just had the most positive and, and energized attitude. And, and, and they, they played brilliantly. Oh, that's awesome. So cool. All right, very good. We're going to take a quick break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Great. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with Teddy Abrams, Brit Orchestra Music Director. So, Teddy, you guys are going to Crater Lake today. What are you doing up there? Well, we are actually doing research for, I think, an historic and very, very big project, something that's very special, and that is a collaboration between the Brit Orchestra and the National Park Service at Crater Lake. Wow. What this is going to look like, I don't quite know. That's why we're going up yeah. to Crater Lake to, to figure out how this is going to, to come to pass. But I know it's going to be big, I know it's going to be special and unique because it is a genuine collaboration between the music, we're creating a piece just for a performance at Crater Lake next season. Wow. It will actually take place there. We're bringing our orchestra up there. Wow. An all-new piece uh, commissioned by a wonderful composer named Michael Gordon, who will be with us at Crater Lake today to do this research. And then we're going to combine the music with the setting and the place. It's not just about building a stage and, and doing a performance up there. It's actually about integrating one of the great treasures of, of this entire country mm -hmm. with, I think, one of the great musical treasures of this country. So that there's a genuine interaction between space, setting, and music. So that people will see Crater Lake in a different way and they'll hear music in a different way because they have combined. This is really special. It's not every day. In fact, it's not every year, it just ever yeah, at all, yeah. that you get the, uh, one of the great places, one of the great settings in America with, I think, world-class music. So this is, this is a huge deal and it's going to involve a lot of creativity to make it happen. So can we get tickets for that right now? <laughs> you guys, it's I've so early heard that it's already stage, hard to book the lodge I would imagine. There. I would imagine it's very difficult and, yes. and it's very very early in the process, but that sounds so exciting. That's right. We're, we're thrilled about this, and we're hoping that this is going to be national and even international news. And I think the Brit Orchestra is such a special organization. It's such a you know, high-level, virtuosic group of musicians. I want people to, to see this that way. I want people to know about it, not just uh, in, in the West Coast region, but internationally. And I think a project like this will draw attention. And this is something people should travel from all over the place to see. It's, it's that incredible. Mm -hmm. Pushing the limits. It exactly. sounds like the 2016 season is going to be even better. Teddy, good to exactly. see you. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thanks for having right. me. Stay with us. We'll be right back.